Seven of these hot 10 weekly comics are optioned for movies or TV series. Which one takes the top space? Find out now. Thank you to comicbookinvest.com, CBSI, for putting out the hot 10 comics list every week for us to cover it. Oh, yeah. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and let's jump into it with your hot comic at number 10. Number 10, we have Black Hammer number 8, which is the first Sherlock Frankenstein. Now, we talked in the top first about First Appearance of Sweet Tooth, which is another Jeff Lemire property, and we know that Black Hammer has been optioned for a TV show or a series. Sherlock Frankenstein is another one of those characters that is part of the black hammer universe and we've got sherlock frankenstein there's dr star on the kingdom of lost tomorrows there's a bunch of little mini series tying in but if you were paying attention to black hammer number eight is where sherlock frankenstein first shows up now this book was cover price only until really really recently and now we're seeing sales in the 15 to 20 dollar range that's right this is a villain that i think we can trust is going to be a fan favorite Mm -hmm. and jeff lemire this is like the third or fourth either movie or TV show. We don't know what's happening yet. Mm-hmm. That's got an option this year. Oh, yeah. He's got a and lot of good stuff. We also have his graphic novel, The Underwater Welder. That's getting optioned as well. And Ryan Gosling is slated to direct it. That's pretty cool. All right. Moving on to number nine. We have Hawkman number four, the first appearance of Zatanna. Now, two different 4.5s sold this week at record sales, one at 380 and another at 412 the most recent sales being around the $300 range. This movie's coming out, and I am so stoked. I think this news may be some of the biggest news to come out of the DCU um, announcements all year. This is actually surprisingly cool news. We know that Justice League kind of struggled. Aquaman's coming out sometime soon. Wonder Woman was great. Wonder Woman was probably the best thing about the Batman versus Superman movie. So it's cool to see that they're throwing some more female characters out there. I think Zatanna is a fantastic character who is completely and totally underutilized. The director that they've chosen to take on this movie, he did The Conjuring. Okay. All right. So he's got a horror background. And I mean, this is she. She does. Stuff, she's all magic, man. It's very, this is all dark arts. When you have Zatanna and the occult, I mean, possibility of maybe something Constantine happening. Oh yeah, either down Doctor the ra- Fate. Perfect. Like, I mean, these are all titles that I'm just. This is music to my ears. This oh, yeah. is where we got to go. I mean, if DC is going to make some type of transition. To, to just come out of the trenches with some of the poor decisions they've made over the last few years with right. movies, this is the way to do it. There's a new Swamp Thing show that's going to be on the DC streaming universe. So again, if we're seeing more of these Justice League Dark properties, I mean, what's the future going to hold? A lot of good stuff possible. Coming in at number eight is another character that may be seeing an increase in fandom over the next couple of years with a new movie potentially being slated. We have Infinite Crisis number five, the Jim Lee cover, hitting 15 to $25. This is the first appearance of Jaime Reyes as Blue Beetle. This is super, super cool. And for those of you who don't know much about Blue Beetle, um, him being a Mexican-American teenager, a Mexican-American superhero, there actually aren't that many of them out there. I know we've got El Diablo and really not too many other than that. Um, I do know that Blue Beetle, probably about a decade ago, had an entirely uh, Spanish-language version of the comic, and that's a super cool one. I have had many people contact the shop, but this is great to know that they're actually going to be doing more with him in the DCU. Jim Lee killed it with the design of this character. Mm -hmm. He designed the armor, which is one of the big reasons this character was a hit. And Blue Beetle may not be on your radar, but over this last few years, he's made appearances in uh, Young Justice Season Mm 2. He had a great run in Brave and the Bold. And he also had his rebirth run. So this is a character you need to keep an eye out for. And one that I think once hits the screen is going to be reaching an entirely new demographic. It's going to be a fan favorite. And I'm excited to see what happens. Coming in at numero siete, Amazing Fantasy number one, First Aranya. This is another Hispanic hero, and she's Puerto Rican. All That's right. very, very cool. So th- this has definitely been a book that has not been on anyone's radar. But with the new Edge of Spider-Verse movie coming out, we're seeing more of these spider characters, these fringy spider characters that are seeing a lot more love in the community. And again, this one's going for $20. Safe bet. I'm excited to see this movie come out. Um, Everything Mm Spider-Man is just on fire. Spider-Gwen, Ghost Spider's killing it. And with this movie coming out, we're seeing um, previews nonstop. Did you see the Spider-Ham preview? I did, yes. Looks so good. It's really, really cool. It's going to be funny. It's going to be great, yes. All right, and 
this is just one female lead that I think is going to come out of this series. But you know what? There's a handful of them. We got Spider Woman that can make that list. Mm -hmm. Silk, we've been speculating on. I mean, let's see what happens towards what is it mid-december oh yeah i think it's next week the 14th or 15th they're having sneak preview weekend oh okay so when we're going to be filming the next top 10 we'll be able to not be seeing this yes okay sounds good thanks cbsi (laughs) all right and then speaking of spider-man let's move on to number six edge of spider verse number two making the list again it's so good again this first appearance we said last week that there was probably room on this book Mm -hmm. and there was it's continuing to go up you know, John's Comics with Kids picked up two copies of it, and we know there are other people that got good deals on them. You're probably not going to find any more good deals on these books. They are getting snapped up quickly at higher and higher prices every single week. What's it at now, Tom? Well, we covered it last week at 400 Now it's hitting 500 at 9.8. Wow. All right. So this book, First Appearance of Spider-Gwen, came out September 17th. But you know what happened September 3rd? We had Hawkeye versus Deadpool number zero feature Spider-Gwen in a panel. And since we're halfway through the video, we got to pay some respects, Russ, because we had some peeps in the community hunt this book down. That is super cool. You know what? We have H. Sin City Comics, who actually did find a copy of Hawkeye versus Deadpool zero, and Boo Comics, who found that second print, because the second print, you know, there are even fewer of those Hawkeye versus Deadpool zeros out there. I didn't even know there was a second print. So I like it when the comic book community tags us on Instagram and lets us know that these even exist, because now I know to add it to my hunt list. And I know that Marsh 4087 had added a bunch of stuff from our video to his hunt list. He had Dead Rabbit number one and the variant. Ice Cream Man number eight, that clown variant, yep. looking so good. Scored two copies of Invisibles number one, as well as that Conspiracy of the Illuminati. The list goes on. Curse Comics Cavalcade and two copies of Immortal Hulk number two. Now, Snipper1166 found those last few comics, but the next one is Tim Canadian Comic Hunter, who found the Hawkeye vs. Deadpool, Marvel 75th Anniversary, all for a dollar. Super cool stuff. Thanks for the great hunting, guys. Make sure you tag me or Comic Tom on Instagram to get mentioned on this list. Moving on to number five, we have another Into the Spider-Verse key book. We have Ultimate Fallout number four. Raw copies. They're up to 60 to 70 bucks already. We have nine eights moving up a full hundred dollars to four hundred dollars. Russ, we called this last week. We said there's more room on both of these books. Than Absolutely. Well, again, first appearance of Miles Morales has just been one of those books. And Miles Morales has a new series that's starting again in a couple months. So we know his popularity is just going up. Do you think this book has more room? You know what? I do I don't know, man. I think you sold two of them earlier this year at 30 bucks a pop and we're yeah. happy with that price. Yeah. Truthfully. And it's yeah. a type of thing that a lot of times with books like this, you just are happy with what you get for it. And the movie happens. You're like, oh, cool. That was $10 and now it's 1000 Okay. Huh. Happens. So there was a conversation we had about that book. We decided just to move those. There's another conversation we've had a few times. And I like seeing number four on this list here. We have Lady Death, Nightmare Symphony, The Art Germ Variants hitting the list now lady death this is one of those runs that whenever we find them we hold on to them yeah this is one that for whatever reason like there's not there's no press on this you're not seeing bleeding cool talk about lady death you go to the shows and you meet the creator brian Polito is at every damn show and if you look at brian Polito since the mid 90s with his awesome mullet to now with it looks like brian Polito with no awesome mullet They are, I'm on their mailing list and they do Kickstarters every few months or so. Mm -hmm. And they will have 100% funded Kickstarters in 15 seconds. Seriously. Like they'll be looking for $50,000 and they will get $50,000 in less than 30 seconds consistently. They're always selling low number variants. It's just a character that everyone is looking for. And when you have the perfect culmination of a really hot character, Lady Death, who people are always looking for, a really hot artist, Stanley Art Germ Lau, and a low, low print run of 77. You're going to see... set. There's like these three of them mm-hmm. in each set. And there's only 77 right. of them. Right. So there's 77 of them. And you get a color, a black and white, and a chrome. The full set's going for $1,200. 
All right. And these books individually, they were going for right around three fifty a pop. But good luck finding any individual comic listed on eBay for under eight hundred dollars right now. Who who wants to split up a set? If I had number sixty six of three of them, why would no? You keep the set. Keep an eye out for Lady Death. I think that there's definitely potential for this character. The fans are ravenous for Lady Death, and I'm excited to see it make this list. There's a lot of cool low-dollar ones. The The Lady Death first mini series is worth a little bit of money, but like the second series, the swimsuit special, mm-hmm. the lingerie specials, a bunch of those, if you find them now, the market is a little bit low, but I keep seeing these going up, especially with Brian putting out new Lady Death consistently. The collectors are out there, especially if you can find some of those early chrome or leather covers. Then at number three, we have Uncanny X-Men, volume number five, issue number four, the one in hundred Mark Brooks variant. This is a gorgeous comic book, and it's going for 200 bucks already. Absolutely it is. Now, by the title Hidden Gem, you might think that they might have done something like Venom's tongue is sticking out or there is a Gamora mask missing. No, it's not actually a hidden variant. It's just titled a Hidden Gem variant. It's a super gorgeous picture of Psylocke, and you had to order 100 copies of Uncanny X-Men number 4 for this. Now, these are weekly comics. The Uncanny X-Men 1 through 10 are weekly for this. This comic came out this week, three days ago, two days ago. And yeah, going for twice ratio right now. Now, wasn't there another book that you messaged me about that had an actual hidden variant. There actually was, and this is one that we got the list so quickly that I don't even think the information had gotten out. I got an email from Albatross Funny Books, um, which is Eric Powell's company, and there was a book that came out this week called Grumble, and it's about a girl and her pug. Eric Powell released on this YouTube video that there were a thousand of the word bubble variants of the girl saying something and 300 of the dog variants with the dog saying something randomly inserted. They don't know where they went. They don't know what happened. So as far as hidden variants, if you're out there searching, I can tell you that in the eBay sold listings that when I was looking earlier today, there was one of them with the hidden bubbles sold for $3.99 cover price because no one knew that it wasn't supposed to have them. Wow. So go searching. We're probably going to start seeing these books moving up as well because... Yeah, it's, it's a fun thing that publishers are doing. I mean, we know Kirkman really likes doing these hidden mm-hmm. variants. We got that Venom tongue variant that hit this last oh, yeah. couple months. And, you know, I think that it adds a fun little layer of collecting to the market here. Oh, absolutely. Like, it's especially, something to, to, to look for. Totally. If, especially if every shop doesn't get one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. There's another comic book that I think a lot of people didn't get unless you were spending a bunch of money at GameStop racking up those PowerPoints. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so coming at number two we have batman arkham knight gamestop now last week we had the gamestop variant now this is the gamestop gold variant what the heck there's a variant for the gold what, what's going on i know it's a variant for the variant so it, what, how much <laughs> did you have to spend to be able to get this thing tom I, I i don't know but it it was a lot okay you had to spend a good amount of money to get this because right now this book is going for 250 dollars. Ah, that is crazy but the gamestop variant we mentioned last week is going in the 65 to 70 dollar range and even the main cover is going for between 15 and 25 and you know what if you like and subscribe to this video and comment down below we actually have one of the main covers again going for 15 to 25 dollars to give away for you this week Ooh, definitely want to hear about any of your hunting success stories let us know in the comment section below what you think of this list and then russ let's kick off this list with a flying lotus kick. Oh, feeling that right in my chest right now. At number one, about time, yes. Special Marvel Edition number 15, the first appearance of Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu. Now, we saw this book trying to spike. Iron Fist and the Defenders. Luke Cage, all of that Defenders, Defenders yeah. stuff was coming out Netflix a couple years ago. This book spiked a little bit. And I had a gorgeous copy that got listed on eBay. Dude, you and had that for a while, too. I it was know. a nice copy. It took forever, and it, it just took forever to sell. It and had now, that little ink on it. Oh, I know. It was a gorgeous car. book, and it, it went, and it's a sad story. But um, 
a 9.8 went for $3,300, a 9.4 went for $600, and 9.2 went for $328. So raws, you're really looking in the $250 to $300 range for a nice looking raw book. Super excited to see this make the list, Russ. I mean, we have a movie optioned. It's said to be very similar to Black Panther and like with very Asian cast, showing a lot of diversity and culture. Something that we haven't seen. I mean, this is actually going to be Marvel's first Asian-led superhero movie. Okay, that's pretty cool. And this is a comic that's based off of like Kung Fu, you know, David Carradine. And the interesting thing about that is Bruce Lee actually came up with the idea for the Kung Fu TV show, and he didn't even get cast in his own show. They cast a white man, David right. Carradine, in place of him. So hopefully this will make up for the cultural appropriation. <laughs> a little bit, but you know what? It's also said that Jim Starlin modeled this character after Bruce Lee a little bit. Oh, absolutely. It's like, Can you imagine if Marvel really wanted to do this right, if they gave us like a legit Kung Fu movie, mm -hmm. like for real? Like, enter the dragon kind of stuff. That would be super. Oh, my gosh. Super cool. All right, I want to know from what the audience thinks about that kind of movie in the comment section below. Awesome. And shout out to uh, comicbookinvest.com. Thanks so much for this awesome shirt. Thanks so much to everyone. And thanks for getting us this awesome weekly list for us to be able to share with the comic book community. Hit that like and subscribe button so we have an excuse to send you a comic book this week. And as always, geek responsibly. Enough said. Thanks so much for watching the video. Shout out to Big O F G C U 42 as well as the Comic Otaku. We're going to be sending each of you a copy of Ironheart number 1. And don't forget to hit the description for the link to sign up for the mystery mail call. You have until the 15th to sign up before our deadline. We're going to be sending out some really cool books. We got a first appearance of X23 going out, and we'd love to have you join the community. 